Thank you, Kathy, and thanks to the Coolidge for their support um, in making this event, Science on Screen Tonight, part of Brookline Sister City Week. Um, I also want to thank Choby Hoy. Choby is a longtime supporter of the Sister City Project, and she's the chair of our 2016 Celebration Committee, and thanks to... Thanks to all our Celebration Committee and board members for their incredible work in making this week and putting together this week. I want to introduce you um, and ask you to join me in welcoming our guests from Quetzalcoatl. Um, but before I do that, I want to just say a few words about the Sister City Project for those of you who may not be familiar with it. The town of Brookline has had a sister city uh, relationship with Quetzalcoatl, which is a small rural community in Nicaragua for 29 years. And some have said this is the best kept secret, so we're trying to get it out. It's make it no longer a secret. Um, we have partnered with the Quetzalcoatl community on many different uh, projects recommended by the community. Most of our work has been in healthcare and education and housing. Uh, in healthcare, for example, we've uh, we've supported efforts to improve uh, infrastructure, primary care delivery. We've built a health center. We've provided approximately $175,000 in medical equipment. And we've tried to assist them in the effort to combat the chronic kidney disease epidemic, as well as more recently, the, the Zika epidemic. In education, we've built a school. Uh, we have built a library, first library in the community. And most recently, we have uh, supported and collaborated with the community in, in the opening of the first three computer classrooms in the community, one in each of the three high schools. Uh, we've also been involved in supporting special needs education and arts programs. So apart from the projects, I guess what I should say is that the real um, relationship between our communities, which are very different on the surface, um, different locations, different culturally, different economically. It's really all about the people, and I hope that doesn't sound trite, but it is really, really, really the case. And that's also why it's so special to have five visitors spending the week with us so we get to know them more and they get to meet us in our community. Um, I'd like to, there'll be time to meet them after the, uh, after the show tonight. They'll be out back but also want to invite all of you. We are a, um, a small, non-governmental funded. We receive no government funding um, with no staff, so almost all of the money we raise goes directly to our projects in Quetzalcoatl. And we have a celebration fundraiser, a, a Taste of Brookline, on Thursday, this coming Thursday night. We're gonna be honoring Peter and Jean Stringham longtime supporters of the Sister City Project. If you'd like to join us or would like to learn more about um, our projects, there's a table in the back of the room, uh, at the back of the theater, and uh, please feel free to stop by. So now it's my pleasure to introduce our, our five guests. Um, Kathy alluded to um, something that happened in Miami. It took them 16 hours to get here um, this past Saturday. They're only here for less than two, well, just two days, I guess, now. Um, they had a 16-hour trip from Quetzalcoatl, which included a three-hour wait to get through customs and immigration. Um, nonetheless, they're here. We're very happy that they're still smiling. Uh, they were, they've were they been incredible ambassadors yesterday and today. We've kept them very busy. We've already visited schools, and they've made presentations in different locations. So now I'm going to turn the mic over to Fabio Borda. Fabio. Good evening, everybody. Uh, in the name of my friend, uh, I want to say um, we are very happy uh, of be for being here uh, in Brooklyn. I love Brooklyn. Brooklyn, it's a it's a beautiful place. This is my first time in the United States, um, and my friends and I are very thankful because we were invited by the. Um, Sister City Project. Um, we hope someday you can visit Quetzalcoatl, Nicaragua. Uh, 
it would be a good idea that you be there. Okay, thank you. Good evening. It's really great to be here. Um, I appreciate this opportunity. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity I've had to work with some of the folks on the Sister City Project and to learn um, quite a bit more about Kesselblake and some of the issues that they're dealing with there. So I'm just going to kind of quickly go over some of this stuff and some of it you've already heard a little about. but. The Sister City Project started in 1987, and really at that time, some of the focus was primarily on um, public health and education and housing, which were very important there. Um, but now, more recently, a major focus has been to investigate and better understand uh, these cases of chronic kidney disease, which are unexplained. The etiology is unexplained there. And in fact, in Kesawake, uh, chronic kidney disease is the um, leading cause of death. So it really is a, a major problem. So just to give you a little bit of orientation on uh, where Quesawake is, it's in Nicaragua in Latin America. It's near Leon, which is the second largest city in Nicaragua next to Managua. And um, this problem is really widespread, uh, the chronic kidney disease throughout Latin America. And there is one community in Nicaragua called the Island of Widows because one in three men uh, suffer from end-stage renal disease. So there has been a lot of investigation into what the source of this chronic kidney disease is. And uh, again, it is, it's an unknown etiology. So around here, we think of uh, chronic kidney disease being due to diabetes, um, obesity, high blood pressure, a diet, things like that. But this is really very different. And uh, they are linking it to um, high stress work in, um, in the fields. Uh, sugar caning is very big in this region and dehydration. So naturally, uh, if that's the case, sounds like hydration would be a really good idea to uh, take on this problem. Uh, but then as the members of the Sister City Project were investigating uh, and, and thinking about how to implement a hydration program, uh, they learned that really many of the residents are actually quite fearful of their water and believe that water may be the source, the reason for the chronic kidney disease that they're suffering. Um, so this is really a major issue. Uh, so it's a disease that's hitting their, you know, the working men, um, and you can just imagine what the impacts on the families, on children, on economy are in, in this kind of a situation. So, uh, so water quality issues there, uh, they've done some research to try and understand where does the water come from. And uh, primarily it's shallow wells, which are going to be vulnerable to contamination. Uh, there is um, intermittent treatment. So depending on whether there's enough money to buy chlorine to treat the water or if there's power that day to pump the water, um, you know, there's many, many challenges. And, uh, and then there's a lack of sampling and testing so that they can understand what is in the water. Should we be worried about it? Uh, and then natural pollutants are a very real concern there uh, because of the geography, the impact of um, volcanoes, lava fields. Uh, there, there could definitely be uh, contaminants like arsenic, heavy metals, things like that. So things that they really don't know, they need to get their, their arms around that. And so that's what the project, the Sister City project is working on, is how to start identifying what their infrastructure is, what the needs are, uh, and what the risks are. So a lot of us around here, we probably take water for granted. Uh, you turn on the tap and, and there it is. And the water ought to be uh, plentiful. Uh, it ought to be safe to drink. It shouldn't make you sick. And we're, we're probably thinking about it a little more these days because of the drought that's going on. Uh, probably a lot of people have noticed that. And uh, in the news, also a lot of concern about lead 
uh, in Flint, Michigan, and concerns about uh, the impact of lead on, on our children. So there are a lot of things to be worried about, but we're very blessed in the MWRA system. Um, we serve, we, we make about 200 million gallons of water a day, and we serve about two and a half million people. Uh, and the sources of water are, are well protected, high quality, the watersheds are well protected um, by our sister agency. And, um, and we have a continuous monitoring. So we really have a good idea of what's going on with the water at all times. And uh, in fact, we've been working on this program, developing it to get notifications and alerts and alarms when the water quality changes so then we can investigate that. So that's happening 24 seven throughout the uh, system. We also have state-of-the-art water treatment at, in Marlboro, Mass, where uh, it's a central point of treatment. And for disinfection, we're using ozone and ultraviolet light, which are really highly effective for disinfecting the water and, and cleaning it up in other ways as well. Um, we also uh, have water quality samples that are being collected. So we have continuous monitoring, but we also go out and we collect the samples and we can determine what's in the water and we make that information available. It's all on MWRA.com. And uh, so we have these kinds of reports coming out every week. So uh, the water project is an important goal. We all know the importance of water in our life. And uh, they are working very hard on coordinating a project with, uh, there's a, a local rotary here and in Kesawake as well, uh, to start getting some funding for this. So there is more information, as Peter had mentioned, on the uh, back table, or Richard. And, um, and there is also a fundraiser going on this week. It's uh, Thursday, a taste of Brookline. And speakers there will be Governor Michael Dukakis and also uh, uh, foreign correspondent Stephen Kinzer. Um, so that ought to be a really good time. Uh, and I hope you will ask some questions about it if you have any. Um, and as you watch the movie, uh, there's really the whole theme of water is running through every scene of that movie. And really think about what water means to you and, and how important it is and, uh, you know, how you know, blessed we are in this region to have the water quality that we have. Thank you. Okay. No questions. Great. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoy the movie.